Good morning, everybody. This is Esther Tanes, owner and founder of Esther Inc. Insurance Agency. And today we're going to continue talking about the journey of an entrepreneur. I'm very excited this morning because it's one of my favorite topics, of course, um, but also because I get to share with you some of the things I learned in my own journey. So with that being said, what are we going to talk about today? Today, last week we shared about, we talked about um, building a business plan, right? And the, the pieces that need it, that you need to have in that business plan. And today we're going to start with the first one, which is the executive summary. What does it entail? How do you put it together? How, if I haven't had a business in the past, how do I come up with these numbers and how do I write it well so that someone that's reading it will be interested in either investing in my business or would want to work for the company and why should I do it? So why should we do it? As I shared in the past, I have never written a, you know, an executive summary in the past because I didn't know that I needed to. Obviously, as the years pass by and I've been in business now for 18 years. Hi, Beth. Um, I've learned that these are the things that I need to have in order to monitor why did I start my business? Where is it going? What are the goals that I need to achieve? And what do I want to present to the public as far as what what kind of business, why am I offering the services to the public, okay? So mission statement. So how do I write a mission statement? Believe me, I wrote mission statements, I don't know how many times, because it's hard to come up with a small message of what am I, what am I supposed to be. Now I've done it, but in the past it was really hard. So you're gonna write a lot of times. You're gonna write, hi Mimi, you're gonna write it multiple times, and, and don't worry about it, write it multiple times, hi Wayne. And, and what does that mission statement? Jack Welsh says it the best. He says that you should write in the purpose of how you're gonna win. And it's not just winning money, it's what's gonna be different about you. Why should they do business with you? Should they do business with you because you have the best product in the area? Should you do business because you understand their culture? Should they do business with you? What are you offering different? So you might have a grocery store or hair salon or you are a mechanic or you're a consultant or you're a lawyer or you are a doctor and there are thousands, right? Other people doing the same thing. So why should they go to you? So that the mission statement should relate that message to the public. When someone's reading that, they should know that what you're offering, what explains what the services that you're offering and why you're offering and how, how is it different for them. So the other part that you should have in your, in your executive summary is the company information. So in the executive, you should have, you should have um, when it was founded, who are the founders, what are their roles, right? Um, how many employees? What's the location? That should be in that section, right under the executive summary. The third is growth highlights. Now, this is hard to do when you are just starting, right? Because you have no history to show what, where you've been and, and what you've done throughout, throughout the years. Hi, Luz. So you want to make sure that you are doing a market analysis, that you are able to say, what's your potential? You know, here's where I'm starting and here are the, what, according to the market, my potential because of demographics, because I can acquire more clients, because um, the services I offer are not in the area. So you have to do a lot of research when it comes to that. For the people that have been in business, like myself, I'm able to show graphic reports. How I started, what were my gross sales? Hi, Martha. So what were my gross sales? What am I doing? Um, um, what, what, what happened in the following years? How much I've grown throughout the years is 18 years later. Have I grown? Have I sustained myself in business? And what were my downfalls? You know, obviously in the graphic, you'll be able to see the ups and downs of your business, which is fantastic because then you can see what are your potential? What are your weaknesses? But when you're starting, it's hard because you have no history yet, but you have experience hopefully in that field. Hi, Sam. So what are the protect, uh, project, uh, sorry, products and services that you're going to offer? You know, I offer insurance, right? So, so what are you going to offer in your business and, and, um, what are the services and who are you going to mark? Who are you going to 
service through? For example, if you're a hair salon, what products are you going to have? Are they French? Are they Italian? Are you going to sell it to people that way? Or is it, you know, is it an exclusive line that you have? I happen to have multiple insurance carriers, so I'm able to offer multiple choices to my customers. So I want to make sure I mention that, that I'm in the insurance business and that I'm able to offer multiple choices to my customers. Now, when you're going to get um, a loan or you're going to be asking for money, you have to add the financial services of your of your business. You know, how much are you starting with? Is it a loan? You know, do you have any debts? What how much do you think you're going to need? But this is very important. Make sure you speak to someone that knows how to do financial projections. You know, sometimes your accountant may know how to do that. There are people that are C- CFO for hires. They know how to do that. You want to make sure that you're asking for enough money, because if you're not asking for enough money, what happens is instead of growing, you actually deplete. So an executive summary should have also the last part should have the um Summarize the future plans. You know, where do you see your company in five years or 10 years? Where do you expect to be at? So in my case, right, and I'll talk a little bit about me because everybody knows now, hi, Nida, that I, when I first started, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know anything but sell insurance. So I didn't know to build a, a business plan. But I did know that I wanted to service my community in, my, in their language. You know, I have the advantage that I speak Spanish and I speak fluently and I know how to write it and read it. So that was a big advantage for the market that I was reaching out to. So I knew that I had that different. I had not only um, the knowledge of insurance, I also knew the language and I understood the differences in culture. And you might not think that's important. That is really important to know the differences and to understand it and respect it because that's what I was bringing to the community. It, I was just not an insurance agent. I was someone that understood their their challenges, their difficulties. Hi, Constant. Um, I mean, Connie. So, um, so the importance is that when you are building that business and you're and you're doing that plan, it's exciting because you're planning ahead what you want to do with your business and who you're going to offer it to and what products you're going to service and what location you're going to be at. It's all very exciting, especially now as I build my second company. And as I write my, my new business plan for my second company, which now I know to do ahead of starting it, I'm very excited about who's my target audience and why am I doing this second business? Hi, Jocelyn. And this second business is about, you know, giving opportunity to other business owners who are want to get into the insurance business and are having a hard time to get in. So that's my mission. What, I'm going to be that, that link that gives them the opportunity to, to get into the industry. So get excited. Don't look at it as a big project. Be happy about it. Think about all the positive things that you're going to be able to do if you're in the beauty business, if you're in the food business, if you're in the car business, whatever business you're in, get excited about it and plan ahead and just imagine where your business will be. And then you'll need to look at that every so often to see if you've accomplished those goals that you have um, that you've planned ahead for it. I'm very excited. Let's meet next week, Tuesday. We're going to get to the second part and um, we're going to talk about organization and management. And let me tell you, I love that topic. Have a notebook because I'm going to give you a lot of details of how to make this work because organization is the key to a successful business. Building an infrastructure is going to get you through the good and the bad when uh, the ups and downs of a business. Okay, so my name is Esther Tanis. I'm excited to be here with you and I hope that you can meet us next week. And I hope this was helpful. Send me any questions and I'll see you next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Take care, bye-bye.